Hi, my name is Fatima and I'm talking to you from Ontario, Canada. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you, uh, the ones that have been with me for a while and the ones that are watching this podcast for the first time. Um, thank you for coming and welcome. Um, I'll be talking about knitting and spinning um, in this podcast. So I will start, um, I normally start saying a little bit of what happened to us. And uh, it's been a little bit weird, some very hot days and then goes down the temperature. But on the very hot days, we thought about taking our dogs to swim on the lake and we went canoeing one day. And my dogs love swimming, but they are 12 years old. And uh, we took Bagui there and the fall, she swam, she wouldn't stop. She just, we would bring them to the shore, she would jump back in and go but the following day she was very bad and after a while she had lumps everywhere we took her to the vet and we are waiting to know the results but she's not the best so I guess lake for them is out of the books from now on because she's too old the other three Mumu doesn't like the water very much so he stays always nearby and the other two like the water so we might take them, but not Bagui, what is unfortunate because she really loves it. And uh, she developed a few big lumps fast that we are hoping it's just inflammation, but we are going to see. So at the end, we'll have uh, a few images from them swimming at the lakes here. Because where I live, we have a lot of lakes nearby, so it's an easy thing for us. Out of that, um, I'm looking forward for this weekend that we are going to have a, a yarn festival near market in Bracebridge that is one hour from my place. So that's, that's very good. And then I will start with uh, no more delays with my finished project. So I finished my alias from Isabel Kramer. I couldn't be happier. I thought it was not going to fit me but it does. After I blocked it, it just fits me perfectly and it's very nice. I finished the last time I still needed to do the, um, the collar and to take the stitches here. So I did that. I had some buttons. Uh, I have a lot of buttons and I was glad that I was able to use. I put more buttons than required, but because I like to have them closer. I finished my pockets, really, uh, they're too small for anything, but, but I love the sweater and I think the cardigan, and it's gonna be great for, for me to wear with dresses in the fall. The other thing I finished was one pair of socks. So in April, I was short one pair of socks to finish the four socks, one sock a week in April. So I didn't finish any more socks. So I'm now officially, I think 10 pairs of socks short. No, eight pairs of, so of socks short. Four for May and four for June because I haven't worked on any socks anymore. Um, this is um, a yarn from Turkey. I like it, but it's so thin. I like the, the colors, even though you see they're the same um, skein, but the colors are, are very different. It's very soft, it's nice, but I don't know why it felt like it didn't progress much. So I still have a lot of this yarn and I have another ball that I bought. So what I'm going to do is I'll knit two together to see if it goes faster because that took too much for me. The other finished project, I didn't block it yet, um, is the um, Douro shirt. This is from a Portuguese designer, uh, Maria Ginitz. The pattern I got in English, she has the pattern in Portuguese and in English. I have to still weave in the ends and I put it on, it's okay. I'm sure it's going to grow a little bit and that's fine. It's not to, it's going to be okay. Uh, so my impressions are about this. 
the yarn, I had three balls. So I used this yarn that is Bamboo Pop Sock. It is 55% bamboo, 37% cotton, and 8% PBT. And I didn't like working with this yarn. And I mentioned it, I talk in my Portuguese knitting group, and they said, oh, we have uh, the same yarn and we like it and ta da da And I think what I didn't like is because the, um, the yarn is very slippery and I was using my chiagos. So every time I had to be more careful because it was slipping too fast. So I think if I had used uh, uh, wood needles, I don't have wood needles, maybe it would have worked better because I see a lot of people talking about this. Next podcast, I will be wearing it. Um, it's just that this podcast, I, I was planning to do it earlier and I was afraid of blocking and not drying. So I didn't block, but it is, it is nice. The other thing is I like this Doro um, design. I, I really like this, this t-shirt, but I saw it in wool and I think in wool it will look nicer. Also, if I use one, uh, one color only, it might show a little bit more the details of the design because it doesn't show much of the of what the pattern that you do, right? But I like it, it's good, I'm happy it's done. I just have to weave in the ends. And also when I finish something that I didn't have too much pleasure doing it, I tend not to want to weave in ends and <laughs> prepare. I need a break, so, so this is good, it will be okay. So these were the only uh, finished projects. So projects in my needles, I had uh, my husband's sweater that I was moving on, moving along with it. It's a three twenty-five millimeters needle and it's a beautiful yarn and everything, but I'm not liking it. And the thing is, I think it's very transparent. It's very see-through. So I didn't like it, but I was doing it anyway. And then I discovered uh, a loose stitch here. And I said, you know what? I'm going to undo this. Sorry, let me get this. I'm going to undo and start again. And initially I had talked to my husband and he wanted this pattern on the sweater, on the, yeah, the sweater. And then, I don't know, I got chicken, I got scared, and I said, oh, I'm just going to do it knitting. But I was not happy, so I think what I'm going to do is, well, what I'm going to do, I know, I'm going to undo this up to the collar, and then I will start uh, with this pattern and with needles three, because then, it will be a little bit tighter. And the, the um, label really says for you to use needles 275. That is what I used for the collar, right? So I'm going to use three and, and that will be okay. But I'll have to undo, I didn't undo it yet. But it will be soon because my husband wants uh, a sweater that is light and I bought this for him anyway almost a year ago so I have to finish it off but because I was a little bit disappointed with that I cast on the single mount from Max here it's a designer in um, in Mont Montreal, Montreal and it's pretty cool like I, I thought many times I was doing and I thought, no, I should not have that many stitches. And then I said, I put on me high to try it on and he was right. So everything that the pattern said 
was just perfect. Because sometimes I put it on and I think, oh, it's okay, I should do it smaller and change, but it was good. The other thing, it was the first time I did the two sleeves at the same time in the same knitting needle. Um, the good thing about that is that um, you get the decreases okay, the same way. Um, I was having a hard time because I knit with the knitting needle, with, I knit Portuguese style, so I have the, the yarn on my, my neck. So every time I change the, um, the sleeve, I would change the yarn on my neck because I couldn't work. And then I would have the, the yarns uh, getting tangled and everything. And then on my, my Friday knit along, we have a group, a Portuguese speaking group of people. Um, and we have every Friday, they start at one and, and more or less at, uh, at midnight. I normally start after work. So I go from two to seven my time. So it's from one to seven their time that they do but they are mostly they are in Portugal or in the UK or even in Brazil. But in Portugal, uh, it would be much later, right? So, so I stayed there all this time. It's like two to seven, five hours talking with them and meeting. And it's a good time for me to weave ends and stuff. So I was doing the, my sleeves there, I had started doing my sleeves the two at the same time. And I think it was Isabella that told me to put the, um, the ball inside the sleeves. And that was good because then it didn't uh, tangle and it was always from the middle. So it was easy. She knows a way to do Portuguese style without taking it from the neck. So maybe this Friday I will try to get the information from her. But even though I did it like that, when I got to the point that I was supposed to have 44 stitches, I had 47 stitches in one sleeve and 46 in the other. So on my, <laughs> on my, as an excuse, I was talking while I was knitting the sleeves and still, so that was very little and they were close to the point. So I just reduced what I need to decrease and I did the, the rest and the sleeves are, are lost. So like this part here, he told, we had 44 stitches and it was to go under uh, eight stitches, to decrease eight stitches and I thought that's too much. But then I put on Mihai's uh, hand and it's better. If I hadn't decreased the eight stitches, it would be still too long. So the other thing is that I was more or less here when I saw that I had a line on the pattern. And that line is because I did two rows of knit all around. Because you do one row of knit, one row of pearl and knit, pearl and knit, right? And then another row of knit, and then you change where it was pearl, it's knit, and whatever. So, and it was funny because when I look at Ravelry uh, to see the, um, the, saw the patterns and the works, there was one woman that she, she had a picture of herself wearing the, the single malt uh, sweater. And I could easily see that line there. And I did the same thing in here. So I undid everything and I did it again. The other thing, as you can see, the yarn color is very irregular. So that's how it came. And it's irregular in general, like some look a little bit more red than others, but even in the, in the um, skein itself, you have parts that are darker and lighter. So it's not a complete solid. So what I have been doing is because I don't want to, to work uh, the whole sweater with one, one, um, one yarn of each skein. 
what I do is when it's more or less like this, this amount, I start uh, using one from one ball and one from the other. So that's my next step. I'm going to use this so that when I, if the transition is too big from one to the next, it's not always, but it can be. So then what I will do is I use one of these, one row with this, one row with this. And when I end this, then I just go ahead with this until I have more or less the same amount. And that doesn't take as much time. So the yarn that I'm using is, um, it's Fils da Fazenda Worsted 3-ply. And the color is 359. So this is 100% wool. And I'm pretty happy with this. <laughs> and let's see. But so I'm almost done with this, um, this car sweater. And the funny thing is that I've been thinking I want to cast on a color work. But I'm going to try to finish this off first so that I can do other stuff before I do other stuff. And I'm hoping to have leftovers. And if I do, I'll make hats with them. Then the, uh, my plan was to have, um, I'm going to put these things here. My plan is to have different needle projects because different size needles because when I am working with uh, thin needles my fingers start to hurt so I think the best for me is to have a 4.5 uh, um, needle and then I work with uh, the other things so I was I'm working on my husband's sweater and I just cast on <laughs> just cast on my porti portico, I think it's portico cardigan. It's a, a summery cardigan and the designer is um, Filipa Carneiro. She's a Portuguese designer and she works very close. They have a podcast in Portuguese and they have a podcast with uh, Rosários Quatro that is a yarn company in Portugal. And this yarn is 50% 50 linen and 50% wool. So it is for, for fall or spring. And I wanted to wear on, on top of dresses. So, but I haven't started yet. I just really did the cast on. And I'm, I bought this from Portugal. It came very fast. The this Tricot Lance is the company that I bought it from, and I went online and I bought it. And I think a little bit more than a week later, I had the yarn with me. So this is my other working project in knitting, and that's all about knitting. I'm I'm very oh no, I have this one. So this is. Uh, blanket that I'm knitting and I advanced it a little bit well I think I was here last time no I was here at the end of the the red and I did all this white and again this is needle six size six so they are very big I think I will uh, finish this little bit that I have and then I will start working on on the other and repeating this part and finishing it so this is going to be very warm and it's to be on the sofa I have a lot of leftover of the blue um, yellow green and, and red so I'm thinking maybe make some cushions uh, covers so that I have it together with the blanket um, it's going to be warm. It's Corydale. It's all Corydale. And 
I found two more skeins that, to, that I think would be enough to finish this, this blanket. And my daughter wants a, a cardigan that is thick. I might do spin more of this just to, to do it for her. But this is the blanket and what I liked is that it's growing, but I don't like to work too much on it at a time because I don't like to work with big needles. Like for me, really 4.5, five uh, up to 5.5 i'm good i think it's okay and as you can see it's a big project thick and it fits in my big project bag i can even put this to here that is what i have now so this is the last of my knitting projects. And my blanket, I am to, I'm at, at easy at this, I'm not in a hurry. Then spinning wise, last episode I had three of these skeins done. So now I have four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight skeins that are done. They are three ply. I had, uh, I think, Merino, and then I had um, uh, South African Fine. And I plied them three plies. I spun each one separate, and then I plied it all so that when I dye, it gets together. And... Um, so I have, I think, around 1.5, almost 1.6 um, kilograms of yarn because each one is more or less 200 grams. So a little bit less or a little bit more. So this is pretty good. Um, my initial plan is to knit something for my son. Uh, he lives in Brazil, but the winter there is cold. The problem with knitting something for him is that um, he's not here for me to try on, but, but I'll see. And the unfortunate thing is that both my kids like black. So I will have to dye some of this black. And black is not an easy color to, to dye. I have some black dyes at home, but they don't give me black black. So I bought some from Ashford and they say if, if you want uh, a real black, you have to use a whole tube for one kilo. So I think it, it's a whole thing for one kilo of, of yarn. And I think that's what I'm going to do to dye one kilo. I don't know if I dye it all or I bought two little box bottles. I have never used them before, so let's see what comes. So that's my, the finished yarn. It's not finished because a yarn is just finished um, if you are using it for knitting, if you wash it or dye, right? If you are going to use, use your hand spun for, for, spin, for weaving, then they, they say, I, I honestly haven't used it, but they say, don't wash your yarn, just wash it after you finish your project because I think you want uh, it to felt a little bit when you are doing the work with it in the, in, after you take it from the loom. But for knitting, um, you always wash your yarn at least or dye because when you dye, you wash. So it's very soft. It's very nice. I'm thinking that I can make some maybe some color work. And, and the thing is also, depending on how, which color you use to dye, it grows a little bit, right? So it, it thickens a little bit. So I don't know exactly, I, ha I have two projects. He said he wanted a, a single malt too. What I would rather not, just because I just am finishing one, but you know. We just want them to be happy, right? 
but I have another pattern in mind. I just need to see after I wash and dye what the gauge is going to give me to see what I can do with it. Then knitting, uh, spinning, I had, um, I was playing, looking at my stash and I found some, some merino that I dyed in 2016 before we moved. So, and I, now I have some black alpaca that my friend gave me. And so I, bl I blend 30% of alpaca, 70% of that merino that came a little bit as gray. And, and I put a little bit of silk in it. It's uh, colored silk so that I would have little dots of color here and there. So these two have reds, yellows, blues, purples, not much, just a little bit. Um, and then I will do a three ply. I don't have much neither. So I'm still thinking what I'm going to do. I'm thinking that maybe I will die, um, do some more merino, um, natural merino with the black alpaca because it's going to give me a different uh, tone of gray and, and try it out. And then I can maybe use them together in a project. So the way it is, I can probably do it, uh, a cow, an infinity scarf or something. So when I did the first thing, I did a sample to see if I liked the color. So I took a little bit of the merino and I applied the, um, and I just added the alpaca as it was to the carder. And, and this is what I got. It's chunky. It's um, not the best uh, yarn. It's very thick. But it's not the thickness. It's irregular because you have some lumps of alpaca there. So for this, I did what I did is I put the alpaca three times through the carder and then one or more time to blend it together with the, um, with the cord, with the merino. And so I'm sure the yarn that I will get from this will be better than this. But it's, it's interesting because you can see how the silk will be. But again, I have less than 300 grams. So by itself, I can't do much. I can do um, a scarf, a cow or something, but not something um, big by itself. But if I do the other one, I will have two tones of gray and then maybe I can do a, a sweater or something. So this is my other knitting. Then I also started knitting this because I was I think my knitting mojo, my spinning mojo came in. So I'm spinning this fiber that I had there for the longest time. I don't know what it is anymore because I was not good organizing it. Um, I do believe it is uh, a long wool because you can see the staple is very long. It's also, uh, it doesn't have grease at all. So that's another indication of long wool and it has a shine you can see the the shine in the fiber it's not too too thick uh, too coarse it's not as soft as merino but it's not too coarse so i don't have much i had 270 grams i'm sure i have more because i remembered um starting cleaning, uh, opening up the fleece one by one, and then I got tired and I put it aside, but I didn't put it together with the rest, so I'm not sure what it was. So I have 270 grams to spin. I spun two bobbins almost, and, um, and I don't know if I'm going to try to put something together with this or not. I do have some silk that is um, in hanks or in, in those caps that I have for ages, but I don't know if that would be enough uh, to be one ply. Because that's the thing. There are two ways for you to do 
a blend. So in this case, I put in my carter the merino together with the alpaca and it gave me a blend, right? And the, the whole yarn is going to be that. In this case, I'm thinking of, because I wanted to spin the bobbins, uh, I think I'm going to have some bobbins, um, one strand in, in, in one, one singles in this fiber, and then maybe the other single will be or silk or this, this, is, this silk that I have, the silk hanks and cap. When you're doing silk hanks and, and silk caps, it doesn't come very, very smooth. It, it always has some texture. So though maybe this is cool. I, I saw the, I think it's, pug, no. It is a new shawl that uh, Steve West is, like it was an old shawl that he made bigger that I, I liked it very much and I thought maybe I could try. So maybe it will go for that. I'm not quite sure yet. But for now, I'm spinning uh, these bobbins and I'm thinking of doing a three ply. And I think it's going to be nice. So, so that's my progress with spinning. Then today I wanted to talk about my spinning wheels. And um, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six spinning wheels. Um, I had a seven one that I found a good home for it. So um, the first spinning wheel that I had was this one. I think it was late, uh, maybe 1989 or 1990, probably 1980. So um, I've got a lot of spinning wheels and throughout the years, but I had one exactly like this, not this one, uh, when I first bought my spinning wheel, I think it was 1989, um, I bought my loom in Brazil. That was a loom for uh, making rugs. And I have then um, bought my spinning wheel because I found a place that they sold uh, wool and I got the wool and I spun so that I would do my rugs. And that was in... Paraná and this was the first spinning wheel. The thing with this spinning wheel is that it has a very big intake. So for you normally I used to make um, for the rugs yarns that are like this. These yarns I have spun a long time ago but I have never washed them. When I wash them the a little bit of the twist will come out and then it's going to be straight. But I initially, when I bought my spinning wheel, was to spin yarns like this, and I spun on this. Then later, I bought this electrical spinning wheel in Brazil. And as you can see, if compared to my new spinning wheel, it's very rudimentary. The intake is extremely fast, and it gives you this kind of yarn, right? And then I dye, and then I weave with it. And this yarn, um, this is Corydale that I brought, I bought from Uruguay and it came in bales like this. But at the time you had to buy a minimum 500 kilos of wool. And I bought 500 kilos and then I sold to guilds and stuff. And, and I still have around I think 40 kilos of wool, but each rug will take more or less three to four kilos. If it's a, a rug that is 1.20 meters, that is four feet by six feet, it's going to be more or less four kilos of, of, of yarn like this. Then what I did is because the, the fiber comes like this, but it has a division in itself. So it's very easy for you to separate it apart. And that's what I did for my, 
it's not here, for my blanket. So that blanket is just half of this spun. When you spin half of it, the thickness stay looking the same, but it's a much lighter yarn. And I use that to make some sweaters for me high. And I also use for the blanket. I wanted to weave that, but I never, I end up never assembling my loom, my other loom, so I didn't do. And funny as it may seem, I went to Brazil in 2019 and I bought this uh, spinning wheel because I could. It was $140 Canadian, so it was very cheap. I said, I want one. And I could never spin thin because the intake was very um, high. So I did all the tricks that I learned with um, Sarah Anderson that was to put this um, foam in here to, to make it like a, a lace bobbin, right? So it reduces the place, so it should reduce the intake. Uh, and I also do this because when you do this crossing, it also reduced the intakes. I haven't used this forever because I wasn't able to do even this thick of, of yarn. And then today, just by trying to spin a little bit, I was able to do <laughs> this thickness. So that was really great because I do have um, three more bobbins, right? Because my electric has one bobbin and I got two more bobbins in Brazil. So instead of making uh, a singles like I have for the for the the blanket, I can use uh, apply because the singles have a tendency to break more um, to to have um, the little pills, right? So if I can make, uh, um, I'm amazed how it's working now. I told my husband it's staying in the house because I can spin. <laughs> and I tried a lot and I couldn't. I think I needed to ignore her for a while because now it's spinning like really nice. And because I have two more bobbins, I can, three more bobbins, I can ply, uh, do a three ply or even a four ply if I use another, um, place to to ply them like my electric spinning wheel you see I'm so in love with this that I don't feel like stopping I really like it it's really great and it's not thin but it's not thick and of course I don't have a lot of twist if you can see here but then again when you are uh, making a woolen yarn your spun has less um, twist than your ply because it's on your ply that you're giving the structure for a woolen yarn but still not bad for the intake that it takes so I'm pretty happy and I would definitely spin more with this because I am on my spinning so this was my first spinning wheel um, and I got this in Brazil not this one but one exactly like this I got it from Brazil and basically I was using it just to spin um, for the rugs, to spin yarns like this that I would use for the rugs. And after I got that, I also got that in Brazil and I brought both to Canada when I came in, in December 1999. So, they were for the same feeling. This one even goes faster because it has, it's like a sewing machine uh, engine and it doesn't have a, a lower or a, a higher thing. And I have to fix it here that broke. So it's the same pattern. It's the same so machine. It's just that one is electrical and the intake is very, very high, very fast. Then after that, um, I met my, my friend and the group, and we decided to do a um, spinning certificate course. And for that, what I got was this Victoria, that is a machine from the Louette. 
and <laughs> if you can see Momo is sleeping on the top of the bag that you can fold this and put inside that bag. This is the perfect uh, spinning wheel for you to use in trainings. Like if you're going for a spinning course, you take the, the spinning wheel. It's very light. You just fold it. It fits in that backpack and it's great. But when I bought it in 2007, um, I was not, I, I was doing the certificate and I spun a lot. So it was great to take to the courses. But because I used it uh, a lot, a lot of it broke. So first thing to break was the, the thing that I had there in this part here. So we replaced the, this thing that I don't know what it does, but it was the first to break. Then this part in here broke. And then my thing here, also broken um, Gemini fiber that is closed now. They gave me this as a replacement. And, but I, the spinning wheel is good. I think it's just that it's a spinning wheel uh, more for the, the course use than for um, intensive using. What I like about, about this spinning wheel, and I used to, I still use it, is that the the tension is here directly on the bobbin and this is what they call a scott tension and this is perfect for you to do uh, a long draft so you just come here and you just push it a little bit more and then you give a twist and you can keep going let me just put it there and you just keep going just going to open it, this a little bit more and it should do a good take in but it needs a little bit of love tendon care there but it's a good spinning wheel I like it. It's very light. So if you are going to a training, and I, I normally go to the spinning seminar that happens in June. Uh, this year they did it online, so I didn't participate. But hopefully next year they will have it uh, presential. And if I can, I'll definitely join again. I have been to most of them so far. And this is a very nice spinning wheel. It's a little bit wobbly now, but it was really used. Like I spun a lot of yarn in this spinning wheel. And what I like, even recently, like last year, I spun some stuff. So now I got my other electric spinning wheel. I'm, I'm trying to, and I have a, um, a woolly winder for plying. So I'm trying to fill up all the bobbins that I have for all the spinning wheels. Um, and then I'll take the, the ply and, and I will ply them. So this is my Victoria Louis that I do like too. Then after my Victoria Louis, I got my Aura. And when I got my Aura, the reason I got the Aura, like, uh, I was doing the spinning certificate, and I think on year two, um, they have said that we had uh, to do, everybody had to take their spinning wheel and talk about it and give to each other a report. And the cool thing is that there was one afternoon that we were able to try everybody's spinning wheel. And I tried a Mashcraft, and I felt the, they were solid. So I was coming from a Louis that is more for course and was breaking on me like crazy. And it's just because I don't think it's, uh, it's, not, used, it's not made for, uh, 
for you to use it all the time like a, a production spinner it is made for courses that's why it's light and, and stuff but when I tried the Magicraft, I really liked it. it it felt solid on my feet it still does I do love this spinning wheel and it took me a while I remember that I got it uh, on my year five and still on my year five I did I used my louette to do it because I was still getting used to it. So when you have a new spinning wheel, it takes a little while for you to, to get used to the spinning wheel. But now I do have my electric one, but I still come to this one because more than to the louette, right? The louette I almost never use because I like, the, I like this wheel. And I think it's more relaxing to me, the wheel with the, the paddles. It's just that after a while, my knees start to hurt. And, and I'm glad that I have the other one to the electrical to use. But this one is a great spinning wheel, I have to say. The thing is, because I have the Aura, not all the bobbins fit because the Aura has two extra pins there but other than that I really love it I think I got it in 2011 and I've been using this as a production spinner because before I wouldn't buy yarn I was just making my own yarn so it has been seen a lot of use it's pretty good I love it and the other advantage of this is that if I find a, a little thing like I found when I was knitting spinning here I found a little dirt I can just stop the spinning wheel and fix whatever and then go right so this is my aura from magic craft and my last one is my Hansen. And well, they don't have the label here, the name. Ah, they have it here. This, for me, was the best purchase I have made. Um, when I bought it, I bought nine bobbins. I think it came with three of the lace bobbin and I bought five more, no, six more. And I have nine bobbins and I'm very happy, mainly now because I bought the Wooly Winder that is a different bobbin and I have to change in a different flyer and I have to change. And it also came with some accessories that are very good to clean my, my my carter so this is really good um, i'm getting used to it of course because i hadn't spun much before but i'm being able to spin a uh, different thickness and i'm getting more at ease with this and the good thing about this one is that when when the bobbin is filling it changes automatically so that you keep having the same intake when it goes, mainly when you are carding and uh, applying. And when I'm applying now with the woolly winder, it's just beautiful. So these are my spinning wheels. I had a, a small electric spinning wheel that I bought in, in Rhinebeck in 2019. But I thought that like my, like my Victoria, it, it was not for a production spinner. So I always, I didn't feel like very um, strong about it, like confident, because I, I spin a lot. But it works, it works fine. And I see that Interweave is now promoting that, that spinning wheel. It's a spinning wheel that price-wise doesn't compare with anything else, right? Um, and it came with seven bobbins, so I found a good home for it. I hope they enjoy, and 
Oh, I forgot. I forgot. Gee. This spinning wheel I bought before I got my aura. And we went to an auction. And I'm going to get just a, a little bit of cotton here. I have a lot of cotton that I have never really done. And, oh, you didn't put it there, sweetheart. I got this spinning wheel. This is a great wheel. Great wheels were made in North America uh, from 1895 until uh, 1905. So this spinning wheel is at least a um, hundred and something years old, 1905, let's say 21, 117 years old, and it works. It's just that um, right now the wheel is a little bit uh, out of prune, but I use this wheel to make like year five on my certificate was cotton. And I used the wheel on year five to, to do all my cotton homework on it because it was better. So the way it works is like a, a long dry. Um, let me just try to fix this a little bit. a long draw and it's very very relaxing I tell you yesterday I got the spinning wheel here and I was uh, I think last time I used it was really 2000 and, and something oh and this is coming out no it's not I'm afraid of doing this because it keeps falling and I don't want it to fall okay so you just put it like this and you just pull and I feel like this is like dancing it is so cool so relaxing I am really in my spinning with my spinning mojo because I have been feeling like spinning all the spinning wheels that I have. Okay. So again, you put it there. So what makes the, the it looks like, um, it works like a drop spindle almost, but it's the yarn at the end. And I'm going to stop here a little bit just because it's getting too thick. Just want to undo a little bit. And then it keeps going. So you give the, t the spin, roll a little bit. Oh, and there it goes. But that's what it was. We are trying to figure out a way for this not to, to come out. But I tell you, it is very, very relaxing. It's, it's very nice to spin. So that was it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. You have some fun. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and now I need to spin in all my spinning wheels because I already started a new fiber there. I have a, a box of cotton that I haven't used forever. So I think I might just spin it just for the fun. And my friend Chris gave me another spindle so I can take this out, put the other spindle, and I will have two, uh, enough to make a two-ply. It's going to be thick and thin because it is, um, some, some get very thin and some get too thick, but, but I'm pretty happy.
with it. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed, had fun. Thank you very much and until next time. Bye-bye.